Hello, and welcome to Compute 175 Python Review. In this video, we'll discuss some of Python's core collection types. These are types that allow us to aggregate multiple values together. Let's start with tuples. Tuples allow you to group values together in order. For example, say I want to group some details of one of my SNES games together. The game is called Super Metroid, which was developed by in Intelligent Systems, and it was released in Japan in 1994 and released in North America also in 1994. Notice how tuples are denoted using round parentheses in Python. If I ask for this value's type, it replies with tuple. Much like strings, I can get the length of this tuple by using the len function. It has four elements. Tuples are structured, storing each element in order. We can access each individual value using indexing. So, for example, the game is stored in index 0. The developer is stored in index 1. And the years are stored in index 2 and index 3. Like strings, tuples are immutable. Once you create a tuple, you can't change its values. For example, I'm going to try to change the value in index 1, which, recall, is the developer, to deer force. And, as you can see, Python raises an error. Tuples allow us to quickly group values together. This is useful if you want to return multiple items from a function or need to iterate over pairs in a for loop. Another Python collection type is the list. Like tuples, lists store their items in order. For example, say I want to keep a list of all my SNES games. This is a list literal of four items. Let's evaluate it. Notice how lists are denoted using square brackets in Python. Let's ask for the type of this variable. So type of games is a list. Lists are ordered. As with strings and tuples, I can access individual values using indexing. For example, games at index 0 is Super Metroid, whereas games at index 3 is ActRaiser. Unlike strings and tuples, however, lists are mutable. This means that you can change and rearrange a list without reassigning any variables. For example, I can sort this list in place. Notice the current order of the games list. Now, I will try invoking the list's sort method. So games.sort, and I'll call that. Now, notice how the list has changed without reassigning any variables. The games are listed in alphabetical order. I can also reassign individual elements in the list, for example, Games at index 1 is going to be equal to Final Fantasy uh, 6. I can add items to the end of the list using its append method. For example, games.append Donkey Kong Country. And let's check the updated value of games. I can use the pop method to remove an element of the list at the given index. For example, if I want to remove the element at index 0, I'll call games.pop of 0. Notice how pop returned the element that it removed. So let's look at the full list again. And actraiser is not present in the list. If I omit the argument, pop will remove the last element of the list. So if I type games.pop with no argument, it returns Donkey Kong Country, and if I see how the list has changed, I'll notice that Donkey Kong Country is no longer present in the list. We can use lists to store values of any type. This includes making lists of tuples or lists containing other lists. Let's see a more complex example. This is my library of games, but instead of each element being a string, each element in this list is a tuple, in the same structure we saw at the start of the video, where index 0 contains a name, index 1 contains a developer, index 2 contains a release year in Japan, 
and index 3 contains the release year in North America. To Python, there's nothing special about having a list of tuples. Let's check the type of library and see what it contains. As such, I can sort the elements of the list just as we did with a list of strings. So, library.sort. Take a moment to think how Python could have sorted this list, which happens to contain tuples. Did it simply rearrange the order of the list, keeping the tuples intact? Or did it rearrange the contents of the tuples as well? All right, let's have a look at it. Python sorted the tuples without rearranging the contents inside the tuples. Just as with the list of strings, I can access individual values using indexing. So library at index3 gives me back Super Metroid. I can use the dot append to add an element to the end of the list. So library dot append and I'm going to append this game to it. And let's look at how the list has changed. As you can see now, it contains five elements. So the length of the library has five elements rather than the four we started off with. And I can insert duplicate items into the list. For example, library.append. And I'm going to insert a, an item that already exists in the list. For example, a chrono trigger over here, which is at index one. So if I look at the library now, it has six elements. And as you can see, Chrono Trigger is in that list twice. In this video, we presented tuple and list types in Python. These types are containers that allow us to store elements in order. Unlike tuples and strings, lists are mutable, which means you can change the structure of the list without reassignment. In the next video, we'll look at Python's set data type.